Now tell me, how many controversial pros and cons, ups and downs, roundabouts, have you heard about Halloween? Has anybody heard anybody say anything bad about Halloween? Anybody heard anybody say anything good about Halloween? We see, I think there's both. And the name of the message tonight is called Mind Games. Woo! It's a time of the year. Leaves are turning to fall colors. The air's getting cooler. Days are getting shorter. And here it is today, it's Halloween. Now, with the Halloween, there's lots and lots of mind games. Some are good, and some are not good. Children, not adults alike, they decorate, they dress up. Some of them are for fun to associate with the holiday. Some of them are celebrating various beliefs and customs. And you know what? There's probably more twists and variations on Halloween than any other, if you call this a holiday, holiday, time of the year, occasion or whatever, than there is on Halloween. You can't even get two books to agree on where Halloween started. I mean, we can look it up in the encyclopedia, you can look it up on Wikipedia, you can look it up in the dictionary, any other reference materials all over the computer. There is the biggest variation of where Halloween came from. And you know what I figured out? It's got to be man-made. It's got to be man-made all that. Because if God had made it, we could have figured out what was going on. So the first conclusion I came to was that Halloween's a man-made holiday. Man-made it, man celebrated it. Definitely wasn't created by God. Now, here's the part that I found funny. When I started looking to see what Halloween was all about. I found out that Halloween found similarities in the English language to Halloween. I bet you're all set. Now, how will they do that? <laughs> okay? Here you go. Listen to this. There's no egg and eggplant. There's no ham and hamburger. Neither is there pine nor apples and pineapple. English muffins were not invented in England. French fries were not invented in France. We sometimes take English for granted. But if we examine its paradoxes, <coughs> we find that quicksand takes you down slowly. Boxing rings are square. And a guinea pig is neither from guinea nor is it a pig. If a vegetarian eats vegetables, in the world was a humanitarian eat. Humans? English was invented by people, not computers. And it reflects the creativity of the human race, which really isn't a race at all. Halloween, a human invention. Back to the human invention again. And it's got about as many twists as our English language. In the twist of mind games, I chased Halloween back to a Celtic holiday. Now this is on the pagan side of things. Some books took it back to 1500, 1400 AD. One book said that the Celtics covered an area from Great Britain to Germany and dated them back to 300 AD. And they celebrated this holiday in and around November the 1st. 
And it was their god, Shaman, who at the end of the year, in this particular end of the year, in October the 31st and November the 1st, is supposed to be, by pretty much a lot of beliefs, the thinnest time between light and dark. This is a time when a lot of these pagans feel like it is a good time to transit, the time that they get through this thin spot between the light and the dark. So their God would break through this thin barrier, the thin barrier, and they came back to collect the souls of the people that had died all year. Okay? Now, where did we keep Grandma's soul while we waited for this year to pass by? Well, they believed that they rode around in animals, hitchhikers. And so, if you thought your animal had so many soul in it, you run it by the fire, the animal jumped out, or the soul jumped out, and Shanham, he hauled it away. Took it back on the dark side. The mass. Where did the Halloween mass come from? Well, in case the bad demons came through, they wouldn't be able to scare them out. So that's why they wore the mass. Now, of course, we know Halloween's been carried on for a whole lot of years, or, or this tradition that's now named Halloween. This came on for a long, long time. Back in uh, the 1940s, over in the United Kingdom, a religion was born. A religion called Wicca. And I call it a religion because our own IRS has recognized them as a religion and gives them tax exempt status. Now they worship the darkness. They are the fastest growing cult in America. And Wicca, of their eight holidays, Halloween is their most favorite, their holiest, their greatest. I suppose that in the Christian faith, their holiest day would be Easter. It would be a toss-up between Easter and Christmas. But this is their holiest of days. It's Halloween. So... They pick this day again. It's the thinnest time between light and darkness. <coughs> and they like to contact the other side, see what's going on. Their DNA ancestors. Well, now another twist, another mind game. The origin of Halloween suggests that it came from All Saints Day. All Saints Day was preceded by All Saints Eve. Isn't that a coincidence? Christmas Eve, Christmas, New Year's Eve. You know, the day after the Now, All Saints Day <coughs> was celebrated by the Mediterranean Christians. The Mediterranean sees that little body. Here's the Christians using that day and saying, here's Satan. He's running around trying to, to make a last ditch effort. He spread out all the stops and he's trying to capture souls to take back with him. Some of them felt that God had already run one of the souls and he was making the last ditch effort. I'm going to see if I can grab just one more. See if I can steal one back from God. So then All Saints Day, which was the following day, the day after this thin time, they celebrated the fact that God actually had saved them and they still had their souls. So, so Halloween 
all the way back to 300 AD to the Mediterranean Christians. No. 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 A lot of differences. Oh, Y'all don't put the blue edge on, so. Oh, How many still purple? So, These tails that go on. So, like, so, like some so, headless horsemen. So, or maybe some so, other so, 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 It's like. Uh, Taking out your. Everybody's scared of something. They have this little fear about it. That they're not real sure what's going on. <coughs> so when in doubt, make something up. That's what we did. Yeah. So when we started to do it, they gave me into mic with Bill and me. That's what I see the folklore Filled in blanks. Because they just didn't know any better. You know? Jump to the conclusion that it's something that it's not. There was a couple of fellas that was walking down the street one day and they come walking by the cemetery. And they heard this noise. Peck, peck. Peck, peck. We better check and see what this is. So they eased over the edge of the cemetery. Peck, peck. We thought it was a ghost or something in here. I said, no. Dang fool spelled my name wrong. <laughs> so, you always look at the situation in some of the most mysterious ways. Not only was it a mind game, here these guys just come along and thought it was a ghost, and this guy said no, so it's called my name wrong. <laughs> can you imagine this guy's name? Shoe soles, it's all you can see. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be out there. Yeah. You notice how Halloween spell? H A L L O O O O O well, the first of it starts out with Hallow, which means saint. That would make you think that it's supposed to be a saint day of some sort. Then you look at the colors and you say, well, the colors are black and orange. Or Tom's going to paint that. It's a. But the black and <laughs> The black comes from the night, and the orange, I couldn't resist it, and the orange, of course, came from the fire that was chasing away the evil spirits. So that's where the colors came from, I at least found that part out. You know? And there's no doubt about it. There's a lot of just plain old mischief that goes on the it's an excuse. I've been waiting all year just to do something mischievous. And it's Halloween and I can do it tonight. For some reason it's the night that you can really do it. Well, you know, think back on it when you were a kid and you and I could do sweet and gooey stuff. Oh, I can remember all the candies we got. Probably the only time of the year that we ever had more candy than we could eat. And Mom said, you're not going to eat it all tonight. And we sure did try. <laughs> we just eat kind of a bit. Oh, I said, Mom, I'm going to eat. But it's all mine, Dad. You know? You get out here and see who can get the scariest costume. Or who can get the most original costume. 
we dress up our little animals. And taking my trick or treating with us. And but you know what the Bible says about it? It don't so much dress Halloween, but here's here's a situation that tells us how to deal with Halloween. Now this comes from Ephesians. Did we get that up there? No. Click. One click. Ephesians chapter 5, and it's verse 8 through 14. And I'm going to read that from Ephesians here. And this is the way it starts off. It says, For you were once darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it's shameful even to mention what the disobedience do in secret. But everything is exposed by the light that becomes visible. For it's the light that makes everything visible. There it is right there. Don't say anything bad about it. Just says don't mess with the bad stuff. It's the bad stuff we're supposed to stay away from. Those verses tell us that it's important to avoid the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Worthless deeds. So why are we so scared of Halloween if it's worthless deeds and darkness? You know? Paul said in these verses that we got his oath. Truth is, Christians must lovingly speak out for what's true and right. If something's going on in Halloween that's wrong, speak out and say so. I don't think that kids can have a party not talking about the, the demons of the darkness. We've got traditions that we don't even know where they came from. And if we get too nitpicky, we'll start wondering why we have a Christmas tree at Christmas. Or why we wrap presents up in colorful paper. Or why we stream lights up. Or why did we call Easter Easter when it's named after the pagan god of fertility? Why did we Easter eggs? Why didn't we call it Resurrection Sunday? Sometimes we get too legalistic. We try to get too legal in what we do and miss what God tells us. Sometimes we don't believe ourselves. A bunch of years ago, my, my daughter Candy, she started screaming like the world was coming to an end. I jumped out of bed and ran to her bedside. I said, what's the matter, honey? She said, Dad, I had a really, really bad dream. I said, it was just a dream. I met, they told me, but I didn't believe myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, that's how the manual games work. We don't believe ourselves. We must fall. We don't believe God. You know, mind games can get really real, and sometimes you got to look to God 
to get them sorted out, to see what's right and wrong. But as a Christian, as a child of God, you're a child of the light. You don't want to do the things that involve the darkness. Leave that stuff out. Stay away from it. Just like Ephesians 5 told us. So in conclusion, I conclude that Halloween appears to have evolved out of a number of fascinating things and stories. And most of them appear to just be basic. At least pumpkin carving, you can chase it back to Europe when they carved faces and holiday turnips. Carved faces on them. Did you know that North America is the only place that have pumpkins? They didn't even start carving them until back in yeah. the mid 50s, 1950s. But they found it would be a whole lot easier to carve than turnips. They were nearly almost hot and more colorful. What would happen if we decommercialized Halloween? Think of the candy companies and how much candy they sell this week. Think of the costumes and the Halloween decorations. How many is Road 501 in the university? My goodness, it's one street right up there on top of the hill. Those folks help. They celebrate everything that comes along to celebrate. Valentine's Day. There's red, there's hearts in the yard. They must have 10 of those big blow up things of sorts. There's about three or four houses that try to ever decorate themselves. Every season comes by St. Patrick's Day. They go green and stuff. Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's not. I don't know where they store them. But but what if we decommercialize? What would we do? Oh, my God. You know? My bag is I'm not denying by any means that there's not a dark side. If there were, ah. would we have been having this Bible study for the last seven weeks talking about spiritual warfare? Hey, demons are real. We had a message the other week about a naked man crazy demon. There was a whole legion of demons and those pigs. And you see what happened to the pigs when they entered them. They'll do that to us too. If we let them in. We as Christians dwell on the worthless deeds of evil. Then how we certainly dwell this night. It would be the demon's night. So but we don't believe and we don't dwell on the demons. We've got constructive deeds. I myself choose to celebrate Halloween not at the time of to add to his question, but for the victory that Jesus has given us over death. Let us not celebrate the agony of defeat. But let us celebrate the victory that Jesus has already won. Jesus has paid the price. We've got victory over death. Victory is given us that separation. We're in the light. We don't walk in the darkness. Darkness is not just walking through the house yeah. without turning lights on and falling over things. Real darkness is a lot deeper. I'm not darker. Jesus has paid the price.
the only thing that I can find in the message tonight to say whether or not Halloween should be celebrated or not celebrated. I think it's a personal conviction. People say, should I smoke? I don't see anything in the Bible that says I shouldn't smoke. Didn't see anything in the Bible that says I shouldn't sit and celebrate Halloween. Said I shouldn't participate with evil. If God convicts you in your heart and says Halloween's wrong, then God's talking to you. And I'm not condemning anybody that says that Halloween shouldn't be at all. And I'm not going to deny the children that have a night of fun. Good, clean, honest fun. But I will condemn. And I'll pray for the person who condemns my Lord Jesus Christ.